All right, so we are done filtering. That was our last episode. And in this episode, what I want to do is kind of do a test with you. Um, this is a test that I do every time, just before I run a batch of whatever. It doesn't matter if I'm running one single piece, or I'm running a whole bunch of pieces, I do the same test over and over again with my larger tank. That's important. You just don't throw your piece in there and run it, because you don't know anything about you know, it changes a little bit from time to time. So I, I did refill my water. Um, it's up to the line. I did stick in my anode. Okay. Um, I do want to talk about a couple things I see all the time on the Facebook group. So I'm going to go over that. Um, okay, you see this anode. It's really, really, really long. See, check that out. And it's flattened at the top. There's a plastic clip. This clip is made of ABS plastic. Um, you probably can find them places. I 3D printed this, but long story short, I, I'm pretty sure you can just find clips on the internet. Don't use clips that have metal on them whatsoever at all. Not at all. No matter how hard broken you are, don't do it. It's much better just even to wrap the wire around the pipe than it would be to use any kind of metal dangling over your tank, even at a distance like that. And the reason this is so long is because what happens, it melts down, right? So what you want to do is use as much anode as possible. And a way to do that is just, you know, like in this case, I flatten the top so the wire can be clipped onto it and it just slides down and I, I can use all the way up to about right here on it, okay? So I, I barely use, I lose any copper anode whatsoever because of that. I used to flatten them out and that was kind of an energy crunch. Um, it's so much better just to have them around. Keep them around, flatten them at the top. Anything outside your tank like this for example, if you do have a metal clip make sure it's well outside your tank. No way it's dangling over the top of it. Okay so let's talk about things you're going to want to keep around in your lab. Okay. One, you're going to want to get a piece of copper like this. It's uh, about 0 0.05, uh, maybe 32nd of an inch copper. Pure copper, 100% pure copper. Okay. Don't, uh, let's say, go to your hardware store. You're going to find copper that looks like that, but really it's aluminum with a copper painting over the top of it, so don't be fooled. If you cannot get a hold of that, you can also go to Amazon and get this copper foil tape, okay? It does have a sticky side. What you do is you heat the tape up, okay? You heat it up, and you burn the stickiness off of it. Okay, you can use a torch for this. Do it outside. You know, just like one of those little pro hand propane torches. Just go outside, torch the, torch the tape, and the stickiness falls right off of it and um, then you can dip it in vinegar and salt and that will pickle it back to get off the, uh, the black. Okay, that's the worst case scenario. And you could do, you know, a piece like this, you know, maybe two feet, and that'll last you a long time. So that's an alternative. Okay, you want one of these. This is a punch, so it kind of sounds like this. Like that. Okay, you want a piece of plywood. Plywood. Just a little one. You're going to want some extension cord. You can get this at your hardware store. Just get a big piece of extension cord and cut it up. Uh, and what you want to do is peel the coating off of it. And these are going to be your test wires. Okay? And all you do is to peel it long enough where these slide right out now. This will last you a very long time, you think, and you'll run th you'll actually go through a lot of extension cords, to be honest with you. If you get really into this stuff, um, I go through a lot of extension cords. This stuff is great for all your organics, your leaves, your anything that you're dipping into the tank, uh, rings, jewelry, anything, 
you want the wire this thin. I think this is about a 24 to 32 gauge wire. But again, just get extension cord and just cut it up. You're going to want a pair of tin snips. Okay. You're going to want some steel wool. And I use a lot of rubbing alcohol because I can wipe off the surface too. So now let's get into a test square. Okay. All right, so basically all I need is a little half inch square by half inch square. You don't have to get so exact you're sitting here forever. I just cut off a piece that's about a half inch by a half inch. Just like that, a little test square. Then you just threw your steel wool on it. And then you take a piece of paper towel with some rubbing alcohol and you can just take the any kind of steel off of it. Basically you want to remove the top layer of oxide on the top. And then you take your punch. You can use a drill press too. I just I like this because it's just over here and I don't have to go over to my drill press. And I just It's a little bit better. Should have sharpened that before I started. So you can put that in there, just like that. And bam. Now, if you were smart in manufacturing, what we do, we make a bunch of the things that we need ahead of time. So rather than make a bunch of jewelry, make a bunch of these. Make about 50 of these. Alright, so no matter what power supply you have, what you have to do is zero out the amps, okay? So, in this case, these are my amps up in the upper right hand side, it says 0.149, okay? So all I'm going to do is go to amps, and I'm going to go and zero that out. So it says zero, 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 zero. Notice my volts are cranked all the way up at 23 volts, okay? But zero amps. So that's how I run. High voltage, no amperage at first. So let's talk about the surface area here. All right, so if you're ever confused about calculation on surface, um, here's a, you can type in Google, surface area calculator. It's like calculator.net. You're gonna look for the rectangular tank surface area. And you're gonna think about your object as made into several boxes. In this case, it's just a one box and the dimensions are in inches. Okay. And this box contains 0.5 inches, 5.5 inches. And roughly it, the height of it is like 0 0.05, you know, the thickness of a mechanical pencil lid. So quickly. And there we go, got point six inches. Now it's calculated 0.6 because of that 0 0.05 surface that goes all the way around it. So I can go anywhere from in this test to 0 0.05 to 0.6. That's a pretty big range and I'll show you you know like what we're going to do is run a test using those numbers and kind of look at the, the plating as as it looks based upon that range. Okay, so that's how I get this calculation right here. I go to a website like this. If it was a complex object, I would just simply break it up in my head as uh, different rectangles and just do the calculation that way. Now, I want to know how my liquid is. Okay, what is, well, how is it operating? Because if I just set it at 0.5, I'm not really learning too much about the liquid. So this test is something I do to kind of understand 
where to begin at. Because let's say I put something with graphite, right? It has a graphite surface. The graphite surface really is kind of fragile when it comes down to it. You, it won't be able to accept the same amperage as this piece of copper, right? So if I have it at too high of an amp, if it was graphite, it would sometimes burn, right? So I have to figure out where I can start. So instead of like 0.5 amp, I'm going to say 0.05 amp. So we start out small and then we move up in increments until we get a good result. Then we just kind of copy that down and that's how we know what to set the tank at. Because every tank is different. There's so many different variables. I'll kind of go over a few of them here in a second. So I'm just going to put my uh, amps at 0 0.05. And actually, I'm just going to turn it off, too. So it's set, but it's turned off. All right, so now I can put that in my tank. Let's see here. I'll take you off the try back. It's going to be a little shaky. I'm sorry. Don't get sick. All right, so uh, clip. You notice that the clip is clip onto the wire so the wire makes good contact with this. Alright, so that's where you hang that's your cathode. You're hanging it into the tank. It doesn't matter about how far down it is in the tank, but it does matter about this. The distance between here is different for every tank. Because every tank is a different maybe volume of liquid, right? And then also has a different distance between the anode and the cathode. So that distance, we can usually use a whole cell test to figure out, you know, like the maximum distance and the current that we should be using based upon that distance, but not everybody has a whole cell test. So this kind of replaces that whole cell test on a very, 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 very basic level. Uh, so what I do is hang it in the tank, set it at 0 0.05, and then we're going to turn that on. Good. 0 0.05, 0 0.3 volts. Good to go. So, if this was graphite, you would see that start to climb eventually, um, as far as the volts are concerned, because of the conductivity slowly growing. But since it's pure copper, it's going to stay at a certain set voltage for a while. Now we're going to leave that in there for about 10 or 15 minutes and kind of look at it. It's probably not going to be the best, to be honest with you. It's probably going to be like a kind of a, a very pinkish, not very bright surface. Um, so just be prepared. It's not going to be the best thing in the world. But um, I know that going in because it's very low as far as amperage is concerned. Okay, so we'll come back to it. All right, let's check our little square, shall we? Let's see what we got. What do we got? Yes. So this has been in there, uh, I want to say an hour because I just like got into other projects. And um, let's see if I can get it at an angle. You can see how when I go like that with the light, yep, it's pinkish. You can feel the wire is still bendable, okay? That's telling me that it's not plating very fast, but there is a plate on there. So this 0.5 or 0 0.05 setting would be okay for graphite, okay? So we're gonna pump it up to, the next step is 0.25 amps, so quite a jump, and see what it looks like. All right, so about 30 minutes have gone by. Again, got busy into other things. So let's see what we got, shall we? I feel like this is unwrapping, you know what I mean? Like box unboxing or something like that. Unboxing videos. 
So there we go, shiny, yes. Whoa, on this side it is super shiny. Nice. I feel like I must have touched, yeah, because of my fingerprints on it right there. Yeah, and that's pretty sweet, so that's probably why. It's got like a little bit, bit of a texture. So it does have a nice sheen. Now here's another thing that you can tell about your plate. Um, so if I take this wire, I might want to put a little bit more into it. So you can take this wire, and if it's really hard to bend now, but it still has some ductile, so, yeah, so I can still bend it. Cool. But it's really hard to bend. So the quality of copper is pretty good here. I like that. Nice. I'm just going to let it set in there longer, but I'm pretty happy with that. Now, if I want to go a little higher, so I think I am, I'm going to crank it up to the next level, which is 0.5, and see what happens. Because that's good testing. All right, so last check, this is the one at 0.5 for the calculation. And there we go. Um, let's see the sheen. Cool. So had it been like throughout the whole process, had it been anything less than this, that's when you add brightener. Um, I haven't added bright. I have not added any brightener to this tank in over about three months, and it's still like that. Cool. Just to, goes to show how like you know some sometimes you'll see carbon filtering um, takes the brightener out, but it doesn't. Now here's the difference between the copper because I turned up, so before it was kind of. Um, pliable, but now, see how it's brittle? It's hard, but brittle. So, when you go that halfway route, so you can see that, bam, okay? Brittle. Very shiny, but very brittle. And that is good for rings, to be honest with you. Like, when you get a circle going, um, it doesn't really matter if it's brittle because the underlying structure was there to begin with and it had the diameter going for it and it, the ring would maintain hardness no matter if it's brittle or not but yeah, let's say a bracelet okay so a bracelet especially those ones like this where they they cuff in you do not want to turn it all the way up because then you're going to get very shiny metal but it's going to be very brittle metal Good time. This is this is gonna be harder to cut too. So if I went to go cut these with like a pair of sn tin snips, it would be a lot tougher to cut that. So it just goes to show. Um, another thing is like with graphite, for example, you might want to leave it at the the very 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 bare minimum for quite some time, and then turn it up because you'll get a a better quality plate on it. For different objects, you would take and make sure you played it at uh, like kind of a mid-range. But running this test right here will show you what ranges do different things, and that's the important part. And if you run this test every time um, before you go putting a new object in the tank, it'll give you a good calculation on where you need to be too. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the video um, on you know maintaining a bigger tank, running tests before you go producing. And if you are interested in content like this and you want to learn more about electroforming, or if you're just starting out and you want to have your own little tank until you get to the bigger tank, you gotta learn from the ground up. I do have a school, the link is below, and I hope you had a good one.